Islam, unlike the other monotheistic religions, is Islam, if we was just to just look at the Holy Quran, we would be able to know so much about Christianity and Judaism. And unfortunately for myself, being with, coming from what I call a convert family, some of us are Muslim, some of us aren't. And some of the tools that I had when I was younger, they weren't the right tools to deal with my Christian grandma, right? Because I was looking at it more like a combative type of thing. Use a kufar, and I'm not. You know what I'm saying? And it was certain things that are in the Holy Quran. For instance, if I would have been there, I remember the last time I talked to my grandmother. I had bought her a, a green hardback Yusef Ali translation of the Holy Quran. And she said, uh, oh, people done bought me like 10 of these. <laughs> she said, I can't get with the X's and the lines and the V's and the why, why you can't just use regular numbers? Because in the, no, those old Yusef Ali translations, they, they had Roman numerals. She was like, which is funny, because the numerals that we use are Arabic numerals. So it would only make sense that the Quran, why are you putting it in Roman numerals? Like for her, she was like, and she was a very, very religious woman. So I, I would go to her house when I was a kid growing up. It's my grandmama. Picture, she had an iconic picture of the Last Supper in the house. Now we have a surah in the Holy Quran that's named for the Last Supper, Surah Maida. This I could have told my grandma, there's a surah in the Holy Quran about that picture you got on the wall. But because I wasn't near in life, I, I couldn't navigate that kind of thing with my grandmama. So she wasn't with the Roman numerals, and we didn't really have any religious conversation outside of the fact that she was from Louisiana. I would go to her house. She would have a pot of gumbo just for me and my sisters and then a pot of gumbo for everybody else. She's like, we know y'all don't eat no pork. So I made this special pot of gumbo just for y'all. So I didn't know if she made it with the rest of the stuff and then pulled the pork out, or she just... <laughs> so I'm kind of like, should I really eat this? You know what I'm saying? Also... She used to say, never put your elbows on the table when you eat. This is how religious my grandmama was. If you look at the picture of the Last Supper, you see the disciples at the dinner table. One disciple has his elbows on the table. That disciple was Judas. He's the one who turned in Jesus, alayhi salat was salam, to the Romans. So because of that picture, we weren't allowed to put our elbows on the table because that's what Judas did, right? So if I would have been more refined, I could have talked to my grandmama. And that's why I'm saying it now, because we all have, you know, we might not have non-Muslim family members, but we all got non-Muslim neighbors. We all have non-Muslim friends. 
A lot of us have non-Muslim significant others. We live in a non-Muslim country where the biggest religion is Christianity. So it's very important that we are able to talk to our Christian neighbors, our Christian spouses, our Christian stepchildren. And one of the things we could do is open up the Holy Quran. When I was young, the way I talked to my Christian, everybody, I would, I would memorize Ahmed Didai, Rahimahullah. Allah bless him. Ahmed Didai was great for Muslims. It gave us, like, great self-esteem. You might not want to go beat up on your Christian relatives with some Ahmed Didai because, number one, oftentimes, People ain't religious like that. So even if you prove to them, you know, Christmas is a pagan holiday, they don't really care. They, they doing it because they spending time to, for them, this is when Jesus was born. And as Muslims, we know once every 33 years, it is when Jesus was born. Because we're on a, on a lunar calendar. It's just like Ramadan. Ramadan floats. Every 33 years, it's right back where it was the previous 33 years. So if you went through the summer, you got 33 more years, so you get to the summer again. So that would be the same with anybody's birthday. If it's on a, on a solar calendar, the Muslims be like, well, he wasn't really born in December because you know, the, the dates, the dates was blooming. He ate some dates. Law Akbar. <laughs> we know that whenever he was born, Jesus, alayhi salatu was salam, that at that time, the Israelites, they used a lunar calendar. So whenever he was born, that day is going to float in comparison with the solar calendar. And regardless if it did or it didn't, non-Muslims, they don't care about the paganness. This is this is. Christmas for them. And so the way we can have a conversation is we can say, you know what? The Holy Quran talks about Jesus, alayhi salat wa salams, grandfather. It's a chapter in the Holy Quran this name Ali Imran. And Imran was married to a woman that the Christians call Anne. And Anne had a sister. And her sister was married to the prophet Zachariah. Alayhi salat was salam. And so the wife of Imran, she dedicated what was in her womb to the temple, thinking that it was going to be a boy. And then she had the baby, and the baby was a girl. And she still dedicated it to the temple, even though the Israelites, women couldn't go to the temple. 
the Israelites at the time, they didn't allow women at the temple. And so the girl was named Mariam, alayhi salam. And she was given in the care of Zachariah, alayhi salatu was salam. And every time he would bring her food, she already had food. But the food was fruit that wasn't in season. And this is the Holy Quran talking about the family of Jesus. Alayhi salat wa salam. This is the Holy Quran talking about the family of Jesus Christ. And this is what we need to tell our Christian boyfriends and our Christian girlfriends. We talking real today. Our Christian buddies, our Christian teammates. We got a book that was revealed that talks about the family of Jesus Christ. And we have a Sora about the Last Supper. Akulu Koli Hada Wasak for Lali Blackum. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen was salat was salam ala Sayyidin al anbiya wa mursaleen Nabiina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in yaqulullahu ta'ala fi al-Qur'an al-Karim inna Allaha wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi Ya ayyuhalladhina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimun taslima Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad So I just, I'll end the khutbah You know, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam There was no person that resembled him in his role of his messengership more than Musa alayhi salatu was salam. And there was no person that resembled him more in his character than Jesus Christ alayhi salatu was salam. Why is this so important? Because Musa alayhi salatu was salam He's known as the lawgiver. You ask any Jewish person, he's the lawgiver. And our religion has the Sharia. It gives us guidance. But once the Bani Israel, they became so caught up in the legal law, legal law, <laughs> Allah sent Jesus. Allah sent Jesus because nobody could get close to God without some, some kind of spiritual way. And so, you know, lawyers... A lawyer can fix it up for you. You got enough money to pay a lawyer. You can do all kind of stuff. Go see the lawyer before you do it, though. 
And that law, even Islamic law, it can become that kind of functional thing. And so Jesus, alayhi salatu was salam, he was more of a spiritual man. So they came to him. They said, how is it that you could walk on water? This is, this is what his, his sahaba said. He said, bring me three things. Bring me mud. Bring me granite. And bring me gold. Then they brought those three things. He said, tell me which of these is worth more. You know, anybody who studies the Islamic sciences, you're going to know the worth of stuff. How you going to pay the cat? Do you pay the cat on oranges and apples? Do you pay the cat on olives? Or do you pay it on olives, but it's in olive oil? Do you pay the cat on money? How much money? You got to have this much? You got to be a mathematician for some of that stuff. So he said, tell me the worth of these things. It's like a fit question. And in Sahaba, they said, well, can't do nothing with mud. Granted, you can build stuff, but gold, that's the one. Jesus, alayhi salatu was salam, he said, I don't see a difference in none of these things. And when you don't see a difference either, you could walk on water too. Allahu Akbar. So this time of the year, we need to acquaint ourselves with the Holy Quran so that when people come and ask us questions, we could tell them. And it's not just a back and forth. You got a pagan holiday, this and this and that. We could actually tell them without just being, sometimes we say, I love Jesus more than anybody else. Come on, man. You tell somebody, I love Jesus and his grandmama and his mama and his uncle. I know all of those people because they in my book. Allahumma ihdina fi man hadayt. Wa afina fi man afayt. Wa tawallana fi man tawallayt. Inna katakti wa la yukta alayk. Allahumma ansur l-islami wa izzul muslimin. Wa sabit agdamu mujahideen fi kula makan. Wa salat wa salam ala ashraf al-anbiya'i wa mursaleen. Nabi Muhammad wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'een. Just before, after the prayer... We're going to have a, a janazah prayer. We're also going to have a little fundraising for the masjid. Please, if you got time, don't hurry up out of here because our institutions is what's going to keep us going. People ask me all the time, you black American, how come the slaves gave up and stopped being Muslim? One that they gave up and stopped being Muslim. They didn't have institutions. So the next generation inevitably became Christian because they could go to the church because it wasn't a mosque. Now we have, we have the capability to have a mosque. We just got to make sure we fund it. So the next generation be able to go to the school. They got a school here. They got a school. You guys are doing a lot better than a lot of the massages, man.